as you can see from my affiliation, uh, I'm from a department into the optics. So it's an optics department. Um, on the first uh, first glance, it's probably very remote from sanitation. Um, but today I'm going to discuss um, so how we use this um, uh, optical laser technique to engineer a special material, super hydrophobic uh, phobic materials for a fable flood management. Um, so uh, just because I understand the audience probably not very um, from very different background and not very familiar with the with the technique, the key technique is uh, we use the so-called special second laser system. So I just spent a couple minutes and discuss about our technique because it is uh, important for leading to our uh, discover this uh, new type of material. So um, this is a, a corner of the laboratory of my lab, and we can see it's a op big optical table, and then we have uh, uh, big laser systems. And so femtosecond lasers, um, so what is a femtosecond laser? It's essentially, it's a laser system give out very extremely short uh, burst pulses. So it's at the femtosecond time, time range, and the pulse is very short. So femtosecond, one femtosecond, and as we show on the slide, is equal to 10 to minus 15 um, seconds. So extremely, extremely short. Now, give you a sense, uh, I put down an equation there. One femtosecond or a second is is, a, is what a second to uh, 32 million years. So we know 32 million years about the lifetime of the um, of the Earth. So basically, we're talking about time scale. Uh, although um, the time scale is such a short time scale, basically blinking your eyes is astronomical compared to a femtosecond pulse. So you squeeze this uh, energy into such a short time burst. And the important point is that you can create extremely high peak intensity. So uh, to just give you a sense, uh, if we bring in a short pulse and then get focused down, so you can uh, focus the, this energy in both time and spatial that if you're looking at this focus, um, so it's about you know a, a couple of millijoules. It's not a lot of energy. It's actually a very very tiny amount of energy. Now we focus down uh, this energy. It contains about if it's a couple of millijoules, contains about 10 to the 15th number of photons. And then by you focus to such a, a small uh, volume, light volume, you actually give you about uh, 10 to the fourth uh, number of photon per cubic nanometer. And this probably doesn't mean too much to you, but give you a, um, a better um, illustration. Basically, that photon density is equivalent to, we talk about a small atom, for example, hydrogen atom. And in the volume of a hydrogen atom, we can have about 100 photons knocking on a hydrogen atom. So that's an extremely high photon density. And because of this very high photon density, you can create very exotic processing of the material. So just imagine this high photon density is that on the materials. And we can create um, some very, very uh, interesting effects. So my laboratory uh, used the femtosecond laser pulse, high intense femtosecond laser pulse. We start interacting with matters in different phases, atoms, mm -hmm. molecules, um, study materials, and we study some biological uh, processes as well. So, but today, and focus on mainly focus on this uh, material engineering. So the technique, I just want to give you a little bit back about the techniques, uh, original technique eventually leading to this, uh, the property we're going to apply to the uh, the uh, single sludge management is uh, is originally is somewhat optical technique, so-called black metals. So it's uh, a few years ago um, we developed in the laboratory and. Basically, we use the uh, short femtosecond pulse to process the material, and then after the processing, and then we can turn material, uh, change drastically the property of the materials. So here is a is a um, is a figure about the uh, reflectance or absorptions versus the wavelength. We we all know metals. Uh, if you look at look at a piece of metal, it's very shiny. The reason for that is the metal is highly reflective light, does not absorb 
uh, light radiation. So all light will get reflected. So absorb very, very little. And we we actually make the use the this laser processing technique and totally change the optical property of the metal and eventually and reduce the uh, reflectance. So and totally increase the absorption. So if you look at this uh, reflectance, it goes to nearly zero over a very broad bandwidth. And that essentially means uh, it's black. So if you can absorb all the light into your system, it means black. So you know, versus a white color shirt versus a black color shirt, it's simply a, um, a black jacket or shirt absorb all the light. Light does not reflect back. Okay. So this uh, this optical property have a uh, have is uh, so if you're looking at this, you can see a, a shiny piece of metal. The central uh, part has been totally transferred into this uh, black color, and is this uh, this technique, you know, just very brief, has its own uh, applications. If we look into actually what happened, so we did not we did not paint the metal, we did not you know use other chemical layers to absorb increase the absorption. What happens is we look really close to uh, the metal surface, and then use a high power uh, microscope. If you look into this, we notice we create this very unique pattern of structures and nano and micro scales and this structure eventually become very efficient to absorb the light and the metal is still metal. We do not change the metallic property to anything else. Okay, but because of the structure it's become just so efficient to get all the light absorbed and trap them and without uh, reflecting them back into the space. So these are some uh, patterns of the of the structure and nano and micro scales. So um, the, the black in itself have a lot of applications, for example, energy, uh, if you can absorb light more efficient, it's better for solar energy absorption, better sensor detectors, and you know, even stealth technology. We, we also develop in technology for the for more efficient catalysts, but, but you know, it's, it's not quite related to um, this area. We also um, push the technology um, a couple years ago not only create the black material, but also other colors, so we can uh, create this, uh, for example, the metal into a blue and, and other other colors as well. So these are some pictures. I think it's because this broad range of applications um, now for the optical properties, so the, the work actually resonates very well with the with the uh, public medium. It's got um, a lot of attention from both the mass media as well as the uh, some scientific journals as well, science nature. So um, so but the what is most related to this work is and then we push the technology, we start looking to this uh, the so called uh, wettability, natural wettability. And if we can make the material um, become more hydrophilic, more hydrophobic and the first after that we notice the black material also has that this very unique wetting properties. So um, the wetting property is very important for a lot of um, you know uh, technological applications from implants, compact lens, inkjet printers. But it's boils down if you look into what are actually making uh, a material more uh, repel water or track water. So it's uh, is this uh, contact angle. So if you're looking at the um, uh, a liquid drop onto a material. So if this uh, if this liquid drop uh, has this uh, a large contact angle, so I define eventually I define this contact angle as this uh, tangential tangential um, you know, direction with respect to the surface. So if we have this large contact angle, the liquid will be up, so it doesn't wet the material very well. And on the other hand, if we have a small contact angle, so the, the liquid, so pretty obvious, will spread out, so it can wet the material very well. So the first thing we actually um, so spend a lot of effort and really uh, trying to look into is uh, we turn the resin material super hydrophilic. So we can uh, make the make this material a resin material, any material. We're not talking about the intrinsic property. So right here, um, <coughs> most of the material they have their intrinsic wetting property. For instance, 
some material they sort of attract the liquid, some material they repel, sort of the liquid beats up. And you, you generally, you cannot do much about their intrinsic properties. And, but the technique we, uh, uh, we introduce here is we, we could use the later process technique and just turn random materials, regardless of their intrinsic properties, to, uh, at the very beginning, we made this super hydrophilic. So uh, we discuss, we, uh, uh, we demonstrate this technique actually in the arena of material, not just metals. The optical properties early on I talked about was, was mainly on metals, but in this uh, wedding properties, we, we use it on the uh, metals, we, we did it on semiconductors, glass, that electric, and even human teeth. Okay, so across in all different types of material, including the biological samples. So from here, um, the, the super hydrophilicity is so strong. Um, in this uh, figure, we can see if we drop a drop of liquid, the liquid actually will be sucked up against the gravity uphill and, and go south. So I have, a, I have a video here. I guess I will just show this video. So we can see this uh, drop of liquid. Not what happened. But anyway, I hope you see this. Uh, the liquid is essentially swollen after it is on a TV, um, TV uh, news um, shot in my laboratory. So uh, so that's just the uh, that's just the uh, two just two. Um, um, basically, uh, uh, shots from from the video. So you can see the, the liquid essentially is so strong. It just pull the liquid up here. It's not even slowly up here. We're talking a very very high velocity um, going up here. So um, um, this is uh, an, you know another demonstration. We characterize the speed. We talk about the speed is 3.5 centimeter per second. The up here speed. This speed is the so far uh, highest. Um, I, I think we can find in any literature. So against the gravity going up, it's just the, the super high weak in super hydrophilic effect is extremely extremely strong. And itself, you know, hydrophilic effect has a lot of application. This is one application actually. After the research, we um, uh, after our research, New York Times wrote the article cover the research about the cooling. This is just one application. We know computer today, computer cannot run faster. It's because of the overheating problem. So there's no efficient way to take the heat away. That's sort of relates to the other thing about uh, the computer, um, not the case operation, but Microsoft, I'm sure they, um, they are interested in the computer industry. But so you take the heat away. If they use the, the liquid is spreading, so you can spread the liquid very efficiently as possible. You, you use the liquid cooling to cool the, um, some microelectronics. Um, so that, um, so basically, because the, this super hydrophilic material property paved the way for us to, you know, to start looking to the counterpart technology about super hydrophobic. And we took on this challenge and we um, so got the basically join the base foundation effort, uh, take on the grand challenge, and then um, so set up this uh, to uh, to study this uh, super hydrophobic material. This is a this is a project we basically uh, did underneath the uh, the base funding. So eventually uh, we use the technique again we made this happen, uh, made the super hydrophobic surface. So the super hydrophobic, basically, um, for sanitation, for everything, towards the end, I'm going to give two specific examples. But in general, if a material surface does not, um, does not stick water, if it repels water, it's basically um, any waterborne path pathogen, any problem will not stick on the surface. The surface will stay clean by itself. Okay, that's the idea. So if we can divide this material, this material basically will, will keep the sanitation by itself and will not um, get contaminated by anything have liquid in it. 
So we we show this. Uh, here's the video again. We create this uh, hydrophobic surface. So let's take a look at it. So this is the surface. I'm going to drop some liquid. So it gets on soft on off the surface. Regular material and super hydrophobic. We turn it into. So towards the end, I'm going to do a comparison. On the side, you can see this is the area. It's not get processed. So if you drop the liquid there, it's liquid stay there. So, but the the area get processed becomes super hydrophobic. So the water <coughs> and any liquid comes down will just repel. It's not going to get stick. So this way, and um, essentially this is uh, taking some frames. And if we look very closely. Drops down and get bounced off. It just becomes so strong, it actually bounces off the water. And then the second, the second time lens onto the surface again, bounces off again, and then will get just broke off from the surface. And we took this, uh, this idea actually one step further um, about cleaning. What about if I put some material onto the surface, some dust um, onto the surface? This is a uh, this is the second video. So this is the second video. So we put some dust particles onto the surface. Now we take a look at this. So if you have water, not only water will be bounced off, but also take the dust off as well. It's a self-cleaning effect. But again, in contrast, you can see this uh, originally how strong this uh, the material um, is uh, attracting the water. The water actually can hang onto the material, but does not let go. That's the intrinsic uh, material wetting property. So, but we totally transfer the material property and become super super hydrophobic. It's actually attract the water reaching the metal surface. But now we make not only is repel the water, but also take the dust away, self-cleaning effects. So again, you know, take, take a look at some frames, so we can see, um, so the, the water drops onto the surface, and then sort of roll a little bit, and pick up some dust particles, and then eventually just roll off the surface, because the, it's the super hydrophobic. And so this is a couple of things, um, you know, we can definitely uh, apply these materials into the, into the vehicle sludge management. And this is just one, you know, um, I think there, the application can be endless, and, but this is just one uh, example. For example, um, the squatting platform, the, the legend uh, in, in some of the still used in many developing countries. So, um, the problem is, is um, it's very unpleasant for people to use this. And imagine, you know, if you have all this fecal waste uh, underneath there, and you you squatting about this, it's very dirty. And what about put a put a door, put this trap right here, and then block off this material. So obviously, a typical trap trap door, and uh, if you don't have a typical material, now waste come down may get stick up. And now, if the well, number one, it will get stick onto the trap door. Number two, now if you uh, the waste accumulate on the trap door, so you leave the open, you defeat the purpose. The purpose is I want to I want to close the trap door and just isolate the the waste materials. So imagine we can use a super hydrophobic material right here and put a light spring, sort of close the trap door. Anytime waste come down and you're in fecal materials, and number one, you know, you will basically just just uh, leave it open, and then the material roll off, it will not stick, and then so the trap will close, close again. So that's number one. Number two is, as I mentioned, the super hydrophobic material has a self cleaning effect as well. Even there's some dust, some some waste material accumulate on this, you know, any water. From the urine will 
clean off the, uh, the waste material as well. Okay, that's one thing. I think uh, this easily can be retrofit into the existing system and make, make the, I think it will make the um, safe management uh, far more efficient in the developing countries. Um, number two is a related, you know, a general sanitation. Um, so for instance, uh, many countries, they have green water, but they, they are lacking of the, um, the, they want to clean, collect in the water. For example, the best way to collect in the, um, the green water is, you now you can use this uh, collecting, collecting uh, tank and, and then put some, for example, um, now the, um, the material, sort of like the collecting, the, the green water right here. Now typically, the material, um, they are, they sort of the water will stick onto even, even Teflon, sort of a hydrophobic. And, but it's actually, you have to have a very high, uh, this, uh, this tilt angle in order to water slide down. Most of the material, the water just stick onto it, does not slide down. And we're talking about you have to go 60, 70 degrees and to have the, the water, um, so can can sort of roll down into the collecting tank, and but use our high, super hydrophobic material. We can put a very very slight tube, three four degrees more than enough, and then the water can be get collected. Just imagine what's important boils down to is this cross section. How how much is this this direction the length? Now if you have very high pitch angle, you have to have the material extremely uh, long and then hang to a very, very high, uh, you know, high um, point. Number one is, you know, it's, it's very, it's not practical, you waste a lot of material. So in this way, we can, we can make this uh, collection much more efficient. So I'm just throwing out a couple ideas, so to apply this uh, super hydrophobic material, but I, I think, I personally really think, you know, this, uh, um, by, Transferring a regular material super hydrophobic is is going to be a significant leap forward for the sanitation applications. So uh, that's sum up what I have been talking about: creating this super hydrophobic surface applications um, to uh, fecal sludge management. So definitely, this is the uh, teamwork um, by my uh, you know, students, uh, postdoc research scientists and working tirelessly in my laboratory, and then the last goes to the acknowledgement. So we had the uh, uh, receipt from Bill Smith, the Gates Foundation. So allow us to develop this super hydrophobic material and pr some prior technology, super hydrophilic black metals um, was supported by, by uh, American National Science Foundation Air Force Office. Thank you very much for your attention.